Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. We know all honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him, we, in him lies all hope and salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give it freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him and is made manifest or made obvious, that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, excuse me, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it and the ones watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's open up to John chapter 7, verse 14. Let's try to shoot through this. We got a lot to cover. It's John chapter 7, verse 14. It's Yahushua talking. John chapter 7, verse 14. Watch what the book says. Lawson? Now about the midst of the feast, Yahushua went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man let us, having never learned? Uh-huh. So they wanted to know, how does he know the scripture? He never learned the scripture. How does he know it? Right? Let's hear about it. Yahushua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Uh-huh. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. And that's the key, right? He's giving us the key. He's giving us, he's letting us know how to accept, how to walk. You know, people say a lot of things, like, you know what I'm saying, I believe and I've accepted Jesus. He's telling us how to do it. He's saying anybody who obeys his will, if you do what the Most High God says, then you'll know whether or not somebody is lying to you about, about the religion that we, that we claim we accept, right? about the doctrine that we claim we believe and walk in. All right? So it's important for us to understand what we're doing and to understand what we're doing, it's important for us to obey what we do understand, right? It's a constant walk, just like what Peter tells us, just continue to add on, right? You add on to peace and virtue and, and brotherly kindness and love, they right? Like, they say Christianity or the Bible or God is not religion. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? People up there tell us, they tell us it's, they say it's spiritual, right? You know, I'm, I'm done. You know, they post it on Facebook, I'm done with religion, you know what I'm saying? I'm just all about being spiritual or my spirituality or I got a personal connection with God and all that. So, you know, all that stuff is cold for I don't know what I'm talking about. Right. All that stuff is cold for I'm doing exactly what I want to do. Ain't nobody going to say nothing about it. Right? Because they don't have a rule. They don't have an authority over them. Right? So they they want they want to remove authority and then try to claim the authority at the same time. They say, I got a personal connection with God to say that. Y'all can't see what me and God got going, going on. So, really, I ain't got no, no connection with nothing. I'm going to do what I want to do. But when y'all try to criticize me, I'm going to say, me and God got this figured out already. You know what I'm saying? Just run their mouth. Just tell them a whole bunch of lies. So, what we want to do, we don't want to We don't want to try to hide behind our personal connection with our imaginary God. What we want to do is we want to try to show to the world, this is our standard. You can open up the book and read it. And all of us going to follow the same thing. That's something that a person can be held accountable to, not just by God, but also men, right? And that's what's important for us. We want to be held accountable. We want to show people that God's way is righteous. We don't want to be hypocriting, doing what we want to do. And at the end of the day, I love God so much. I'm so happy that he brought me out of this stuff and you still in it. What do he bring you out of? You still doing it. What? On my light. What do he bring you out of? You still in it, Right. It's important for us to be able to put ourselves in a position where we can obey God. Then God can teach us. All right, let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 66, pick up where we left off last week. So last week, we talked a lot about the third temple, right? What we call the third temple, at least, right? We talked a lot about the book. The book don't call it no third temple. That's what we traditionally call it. I might not, you know, I ain't going to call it no third temple. I'm just going to say the temple that's written about in Ezekiel, all right? We talked about the temple that's written about, that's prophesied in Ezekiel. And we try to talk about how that's going to look, what the time period was. We looked and looked at a few things that suggested to us that the time period is going to be before the Messiah returns. And we based that off of Ezekiel told us that the priests would be able to have wives and they would be given into marriage. But we know Yahushua told us in the resurrection there would be nobody given into marriage, right? So 
So we know since there's no marriage in the resurrection, and then the priests of the Most High God were getting married, we know that this would have had to be before, before the resurrection. And we know Yahushua comes with the resurrection. So we know that this was before Yahushua came. Okay? So we talked about that a little bit. Then we also talked about um, in the last, I think it was the last chapter of Ezekiel, um, or the second to the last maybe, or closer in, um, it talked about a river flowing out. A river flowed, flowing out from the house. You know what I'm saying? From, from uh, the Most High God's Holy of Holies. And then the river got bigger the further away it got. And then that river ended up replenishing all of the earth. You know what I'm saying? We talked about the plagues hitting the earth and poisoning the water, fish is dead and all that. But wherever this river went, there were plenty of fish and it healed the waters, the book said. It caused the vegetation to grow again. So we talked about that. Then we was like, logically, if the worst rest of the world is getting all these plagues, it's famine, people struggling, they hungry, they ain't got nothing to do. If the rest of the world go through all that, logically they would want to come to where the where the the um where the life is and where the food is and that just happened to be where we will be after we are um uh, gathered from all the lands and taken back to jerusalem right so we talked about us going back to jerusalem the week prior we talked about this temple being built we talked about how um how uh, all the nations were going to gather together and then they were going to come um and fight against god so we want to try to pick up from there um, we mentioned a little bit the Battle of Armageddon, the Valley of Jehoshaphat. We ended off talking about the Valley of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat and the reason why the uh, the last times is going to be called that. The Valley of, I mean, the battle that goes in the Valley of Jehoshaphat is because when Jehoshaphat went to war in the valley, he was the one that was crying out to God like, man, I don't think we're going to make it. All these nations coming up against us. And God told him, I'm going to fight the battle. You know what I'm saying? Don't you worry about it. I'm going to fight the battle. It's going to be in the same way because we remember, we heard, we saw Yahushua, his vesture was dipped in blood, right? But all his saints still had white. So we're going to try to pick up from there and kind of talk about that a little bit. This is Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter 66, verse 20. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 20. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all the nations upon horses. Chariots. This is talking about the Gentiles, right? When we go, we, this, I don't even think, uh, I might have wrote that one down on the accident. I don't even think I wanted to get there, but that's all right. We can start off right here. If you, so, one of the things that people forget or don't know is that Gentiles will be carrying us over. They're going to be bringing us over, right? So, however we end up getting back and in going into the wilderness is going to be with the assistance of Gentiles. That's how they're going to end up being joined to us. So this is what this is prophesying right now. He's saying the strangers, they, he said they right there, but it's talking about the strangers. Keep going. And they shall bring your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and upon swift beasts. And upon swift beasts. So horses, chariots, and swift beasts is how we get back. All right? So we're going to be in getting back, and they're going to be providing for us horses, chariots, and swift beasts. And they're going to take us as an offering to God. So what, what they're doing is, they saying, here are the true Hebrew people. Here are the true descendants of the Israelites. This is what we offer to you, God. We're bringing your people back to the land. We're bringing your people back into the wilderness or back on this our part of the world. Right? And they're doing that as a peace offering to God so that God will give them peace. And that's how they're going to end up being joined to us. There's going to be a lot. We're going to have some real allies with these Gentiles. Right? It's a lot of them that shoot us down and do all these other things. But there's also a lot of them out there that are, that are willing to be true allies as soon as they know the truth, right? Some of them try to be allies in ignorance, right? So they'll, they'll go for Black Lives Matter and they'll fight for, you know, some of our stuff, but they don't really know what we truly need because it hasn't, it hasn't been really been revealed to the world, right? We just now understanding what we truly need. So as we get it and we have a Hebrew that can teach a man or a woman that's a Gentile, then you'll see that, that they'll start to be true allies to us against our call, right? Let's see, keep going. He said, they're going to bring us over in swift beasts. To my holy mountain, Jerusalem, says the they're Lord. They're going to bring us where? To my holy mountain, Jerusalem. So you see that they're going to bring us to Jerusalem, right? There's no question about it. When we go, it's going to be in Jerusalem, right? It's very important to understand where we are. A lot of people think that we won't get to Jerusalem until after the Messiah comes back. So the Messiah, going, they think this is what they think. The reason why a lot of the stuff that people have a problem with, a lot of the stuff that we talk so far about us being in the temple and all that 
because they have an understanding of we won't get back to Jerusalem until after the Messiah comes. After the Messiah comes, then we follow the Messiah to Jerusalem or something like that. So we're going to go over that and we're going to try to understand that that's not how the book lays this out. All right. So let's go to uh, Zechariah. We might come back here, but let's go to Zechariah chapter 12 real quick. And we can start at verse 1. It's Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, says the Lord. Uh-huh. Which stretch forth the heavens and lays the fountains of the earth and forms the spirit of man within him. All right? He talking about who God is. He said this is what God is able to do. Keep going. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about. He said Jerusalem going to be a cup of trembling unto all the people that are. He said all the nations that are surrounding Jerusalem are going to be scared, right? Keep going. When they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. Right? He said they're going to be sieging Judah and Jerusalem, right? This means that they're going to be surrounding us, trying to knock down our walls or penetrate our areas, right? Watch this. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. He said it's going to be a burdensome stone. It means it's going to be in the way, right? So they're going to be trying to get to something in Jerusalem for whatever reason going to be in the way. Certainly, it couldn't be trying to get to these, these, these waters that's healing everything, right? Let's see. Keep going. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. Uh-huh. Though all the people of the earth be gathered, gathered together against it. Uh-huh. In that day. You so notice, all the people of the earth are going to be gathered together against Jerusalem. I wonder why they're there, right? We just heard that the strangers are going to take us back to Jerusalem. Now we're hearing about all the people of the earth gathered together against Jerusalem. Let's keep going. It's Zechariah. In that day, says the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness, and I will open my eyes upon the house of Judah and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. Uh-huh. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength and the Lord of hosts their God. Right? So he said the governors of Jerusalem. That means we're going to have people who govern us like kings. Right? We had governors before. Who was our governor? Uh, what's my man's name? Don't say nothing. Zerubbabel was a governor. Zerubbabel was a governor. Who was my man that was governor after uh, Babylon took him? Uh, GLTL or something like that. No, GLTL killed him. I don't know. I forgot it. But in Jeremiah, man, when Babylon went away and the governor, they, they conspired oh, against him. They, they off I can't remember his name. Yeah, I know you're talking about yeah. that. I wasn't even thinking about him. Yeah, no. Wasn't Nehemiah a governor? Get, get, get liar or something like that. Something like that. Nehemiah, Nehemiah wasn't a governor. Nehemiah was, yeah. He, I think he wasn't was, he a governor? He was like a leader, yeah. He might not have been a governor, though. Because Ezra was the priest, but Nehemiah was like... He had run his name. I don't know if yeah, he was the governor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because the governors were just like kings, right? The governors came from the same... No, it wouldn't have been Nehemiah, because governors came from Judah, right? Nehemiah, you look at... Where did Nehemiah come from? Nehemiah... He was from Judah. Nehemiah of Judah? He might have been just... He might have been the governor. He was with the exiles in uh, Persia. No, I mean the tribe of Judah, not just like not just Judah though. You know what I'm saying? I think he was from Judah. All right, he might have been. Now I gotta check it out. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you you know what I'm saying? The governors they 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 from they just like the kings. They just they just couldn't be called kings because usually we were ruled by somebody else. Whenever we were ruled by somebody else, we would have a governor instead of a king. So in the same way, we're gonna have governors, right? And it's not because we rule by somebody else as in other people. We rule by God now, and we respect that we waiting for our king Yahushua. Be like in the days of Saul. Yeah, it ain't gonna be like in the days of Saul, right? Keep going. Watch this. The governor the, said, And the governors of Judah shall, shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength and the Lord of hosts their God. Mm -hmm. In that day will I make the governors of Judah like a hearth of fire among the wood and like a torch of fire in the sheaf. Mm -hmm. and they shall devour all people round about mm -hmm. and on the right hand and on the left. All right, so they're gonna be fighting. Somehow the governors. Who say that the, the, the strength of Jerusalem is my strength? And Yahushua. I mean, uh, and Yah. Right? Somehow, they're going to be made like fires and people are going to be devoured around them. Right? Let's hear about it. Let's keep going. 
The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. They gonna, the Lord also is going to save who first? The tents of Judah first. The Most High God, whose name is Yahuwah, is going to save the tents of Judah first. Who is he saving in Judah if we not there? Let's hear what else he's talking about. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Uh-huh. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as God, and as the angel of the Lord before them. And you see these things. This is not something that's already happened yet. It's talking about saving the tents of David first. It's saying that the feeble amongst them going to end up being like David. When does this happen? Last time all nations came against us, we lost. Right? All nations came against us before, and they besieged us. That was when the Romans came. Right? If you look at the history of it, the Romans had the Edomites, the Ammonites, all the people that went around. The Romans got all those people, and then they, they fought on behalf of the Romans to get us out of there. We lost that battle. When did this prophecy happen? Because a lot of people try to say, no, nah, this already happened, this, that, another. When did this one happen again? Keep going. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. He, he going to seek to do what? Destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Keep going. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. And they going to do what? And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. They going to look upon who? Me whom they have pierced. Now tell me what time period we talking about then. Right? It's important that we're able to see he's coming back. Hey, boy, come sit over here. Right? It's important for us to be able to see that he's coming back to us already being in Jerusalem. All this stuff happening, our governor's fighting, people getting devoured, and then, hey, and then we show up, right? I mean, I'm sorry, and then he show up and that that's the point where he takes out the rest of the people, right? But we're already there, right? Jump over to, uh, go back to Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter 60 this time, not 66. We're going to Isaiah chapter 60. I'm going to try to shoot through this real quick. After that, we're going to Second Chronicles. It's Isaiah chapter 60, verse 9. Surely the isles shall wait for me in the ships of Tarshish first to bring the sons from far, their silver and their gold with them unto the name of the Lord thy God and to the Holy One of Israel because he has glorified thee. Mm -hmm. And the sons of strangers shall build up your walls and their kings shall minister unto you. Mm -hmm. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Uh-huh. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. Uh -huh. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. Uh -huh. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. The nation and the kingdom that chooses not to serve thee will perish. Keep going. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Mm -hmm. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. Mm -hmm. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending bending unto thee, and they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of kings. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. All right, watch this. Second Chronicles chapter 35. Notice how he said, all nations are going to come. And then he said, the nations that choose not to serve you. That's separating the Gentiles that are our allies and the Gentiles that are going to be destroyed. Everybody is going to be there. But there's going to be some people against us. And there's going to some people going to be some people that bow down to us and kiss our feet. And they're going to be granted life into the kingdom. Right? Because everybody who took into captivity will go into captivity. This is book. 
He's laying it out. There's no way around this stuff, right? Watch, watch what we got here. Second Chronicles chapter 35 is verse 19. In the 18th year of the reign of Josiah was this Passover kept. Mm -hmm. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, came up to fight against uh, fight against Carchemish by Euphrates. Uh huh. And Josiah went out against him. Mm -hmm. But he sent ambassadors to him, saying, What have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? I come not against thee this day, but against the house wherewith I have war. But God commanded me to make haste, forbear thee from meddling with God who is with me, that destroy, that he destroy thee not. Now watch this. Hold on to that right there, and let's go back to um, Zechariah. So just hold your finger right there. Let's go right back to Zechariah, and then we're going to come right back here. Where we leave off in Zechariah? Probably like verse 12. Verse 10. Verse 10. This is Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. He said, we looked on the one who... Who we pierced. And watch this. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Mm -hmm. And they shall mourn for him as one mourns for his only son. Mm -hmm. And shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Uh -huh. And that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem. There will be the a great mourning in Jerusalem as what? As the mourning of Hadadrimon in the valley of Megiddo. In the valley of who? Megiddo. In the valley of Megiddo. That's very important, the valley of Megiddo. Watch this. Back to Second Chronicles, chapter 35. The Valley of Megiddo. Just keep on repeating that to yourself and see, see if it starts to sound familiar. He said it was a great morning in the Valley of Megiddo. Let's read about it. So now we're going back to Second Chronicles, chapter 35. This is verse, uh, 21. verse 21. But he sent ambassadors to him saying, what, I, what have I to do with you, you king of Judah? Come not against, come not against thee this day. I come not against you this day. Right. So the king into the king of Egypt. Yeah. So the king of Egypt was like, man, the king of Judah, Josiah. Why are you coming up against me? I'm not trying to scrap you. Right. He said, man, I don't have no problems with you. I'm not trying to fight you. What are you talking about? Why are you trying to come up against me? He said, man, I'm at who he after the, the Edomites. Uh, was it Edom? Do I say it on there? Edom or Ammon? He's after one of them. You know what I'm saying? He fought against Carchemish by Euphrates. I think in Kings it tells us who he was after. He is, he is, he is after one of them. He's like, man, look, I mean, I'm trying to get at them, man. I, don't want, I, ain't trying to, I ain't trying to fight with you. Well, watch what King Josiah said. Josiah from Judah. He is our king. He is like, man, I'm not having none of this foolishness. Watch what he said. You know, I come not against you this day, but against the house wherewith I have war. But God commanded me to make haste. Forbear yourself from meddling with God who is with me. Right. Destroy you not. Now this king of Egypt claimed that the most high God was with him. That he was doing it. He, you can, he obviously had respect for our king. He was like, man, look, I'm not trying to fight you. God got me trying to fight somebody else. Why don't you, why don't you forbear? Why don't you hold back? Why don't you relax? You know what I'm saying? Let's see. Keep going. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself that he might fight with him. And hearkened not unto the words of Nico from the mouth of God, and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. So now we had that word, the valley of Megiddo. We got that, we got that place again, the valley of Megiddo. So Josiah, he went down and he came to fight with him anyway. Even though God put it on Nico's heart, the king of Egypt, he put it on the Nico's heart to go ahead and say that. He didn't take it. He was like, Man, I ain't got no time for this, man. We still. So he disguised himself. And he wanted to fight with him anyway. He knew he knew the king of Egypt was not going to fight him as long as they knew who he was. So he disguised himself so they wouldn't know who he was just so this can happen. Keep watching. And the archers shot at King Josiah. The archers did what? Shot at King Josiah. Oh, good. And what happened? And the king said to his servants, have me away for I am sore wounded. They hit him with an arrow. That sounds like he got pierced. This is the king of Judah who disguised himself so that people wouldn't know him. 
ended up going to battle and got pierced. I wonder what's going to happen next. And servants, therefore, took I don't know who this is talking about. Y'all think this is talking about chariot. Josiah? It is about Yahushua. The servants therefore took him out of that chariot and put him in the second chariot that he had. Mm -hmm. And they brought him to Jerusalem and he died and was buried in one of the sepulchres of his fathers. And all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. All Judah and Jerusalem did what? Mourn for Josiah. That's why Zechariah said they're going to look on the one who they pierced. They said it's going to be a great mourning. Just like the mourning that was in where? Megiddo. It's the Valley of Megiddo right here. Remember that. Valley of Megiddo. We still going to come back there. It's Revelation chapter 16. Watch this. Revelation chapter 16, verse 8. Revelation chapter 16, verse 8. If you're going to play, boy, go on. Go hide somewhere else. It's Revelation chapter 16, verse 8. Jeremiah was crying after Josiah died. He knew. That's right. He said that was the last righteous kid. He was in trouble after that. Yeah. Books say he put, if we would have kept on reading, we would say he put him in the lamentation. They made lamentation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, oh, your son's going to kill me. Yeah, buddy. That thing was it after Josiah. That thing turned real bad after that. Three in a row. Came out after the king of Egypt. You know what I'm saying? Right after that, his son, he got conquered by the king of Egypt. You know what I'm saying? Got conquered by the king of Egypt. Then after that, Babylon got to their butt. Yeah. Can't do nothing about that. That was the end of our history right there. That was, a, that was a downfall for sure. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Uh-huh. So now we back to the plagues, right? These are all the plagues that happened. So the fourth angel poured out his bowl, and then the sun... They were given the power to scorch men, right? So the sun was shining so bright, people started getting burnt up by it. Let's keep reading. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. Uh-huh. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beasts. And his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. Mm-hmm. And blasphemed the God of heaven because their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. Mm -hmm. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. Uh-oh. And the water thereof was dried up. That and the, the water the was kings, dried up. That the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So the water got dried up. That way the way of the kings of the east could come through. Let's hear about it. And I saw the... Uh, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. And it was three unclean spirits. Them things hop around like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon. And who else? And out of the mouth of the beast. And out of the mouth of the beast. And who else? And out of the mouth of the false prophet. And out of the mouth of the, of the darn false, false prophet. So all these, all these spirits came out of the mouth of the beast, the dragon, and the false prophet. And I wonder what these spirits did. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth. They works what? Miracles. It's going to be a lot of people out here doing some fancy stuff now. And what what they going to be convincing people to do? Which go forth, Serve God? Which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. They going to go and convince people to come against God. You got all these plagues hitting the ground. The, the water going to dry up over the Euphrates. Right? Then you're going to have the kings of the east that's able to come across. Right? They're going to try to come across the whole river. Right? So then when they try to come across the whole river, at that time, that's when all the people of the world is going to be convinced to go up against the Most High God. And I wonder where they're going to meet them at. Jerusalem. Right where we'll be. And watch what this battle is called. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see Lest he do shame. what? Walk naked and they see his shame. So you got to keep your garments. Keep your garments. And he said, you gotta, you, you, if you don't keep your garments, you'll mess around and walk naked and people will see your shame. We're going to talk about that too. Let's hear about it. What do you say next? And he gathered them together in a place called in Hebrew tongue Armageddon. The and Valley of Megiddo. 
Then the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. You ain't got to keep going. It's the Valley of Megiddo. Armageddon, it's the same thing. And the, when you're reading in this translated from Greek, it's Armageddon. It's the same place that Josiah died. It's the same place that Zechariah prophesied that you're going to see this man whom y'all pierced. And it's going to be a great morning after he pour out the spirit of supplication and grace. Right? It's talking about Yahushua. We're going to be in Jerusalem, in the same place where Josiah got killed, where he was pierced by an arrow after disguising himself as some just regular dude. People didn't know he was the king, uh, king of uh, Judah the whole time. Same thing with Yahushua. We didn't know he was the king of, king of Judah. We stuck the man up there, and guess what we did after we stuck him up there? Surely. We stuck him. We stuck a spear in his side. We pierced him. Stuck nails in his darn hands. We pierced him. Just like we pierced Josiah with the hand, with the arrow. Right? We look at these things, all these things testify of Yahushua. Right? So it's the valley of Armageddon. But let's go back to what he is talking about. He is talking about we have to have our garments or else we'll be walking around and people will see our shame. Let's see what he's talking about here. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 1. Try to work our way back to that. Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 1. It's important that we look at all these different things. Nothing going to say it all flat out. It's important that we look at all these different things, put them together, and what's the consistency that we see? Consistency is we going to be in Jerusalem. Another consistency, Yahushua going to come up to people who are already there. All right? Keep going. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus says the Lord God, How will ye, woe, worth the day? Mm-hmm. For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near. The day of the Lord is near, and it's a cloudy day. It shall be the time of the heathen. It's going to be what? The time of the heathen. What's another way of saying the time of the heathen? Gentile. It's Luke chapter 21, verse 24. We're just trying to get our time period straight. He said it's going to be the time. It's Ezekiel telling us it's going to be the time of the heathen. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. After that, I want Isaiah. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Ezekiel tried to tell us it's going to be the time of the heathen. Yahushua tried to tell us it's going to be trodden down until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Once that time is fulfilled, it's time for us to go back to Jerusalem. That's where we're going, back to Jerusalem. All right? And once we get back to Jerusalem, it's just a waiting game until Yahushua show back up there. And all these people are going to come back, and they're going to be trying to fight against us, not knowing that by trying to fight against us, they're fighting against God. And then Yahushua shows back up. We'll open it up. We'll continue to look at it. It's Isaiah chapter 63, verse 1. It's Isaiah chapter 63, verse 1. Right. These Gentiles are gonna be with us. They're gonna be our brothers. They also gonna be they also gonna serve us. Right? Ain't gonna be nothing like how we serve these these, these people in this country. It's respectable. It's a, it's a loving service. Right? But the most high God is definitely gonna put him in that position. Because he won't be mocked. Right? He got prophecies. These things have to be fulfilled. Let's keep going. Who is this? Who is this that comes from Edom, with dyed garments from Basra? Who is this that comes from Edom, with dyed garments, and from Basra? Remember, we talked about garments, right? He said you gotta have your garments. Mess around, people will see your shame. Well, here we go. Somebody with dyed garments. Let's hear about their dyed garments. This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. Uh huh. I speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Uh huh. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. 
Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treads in the wine fat? He said, why are your garments all red? Why are you, I mean, why are you just covered in darn red? When he's talking about dyed and dyed, when it's dyed garments, he talking about that thing look like it was just dipped in red. Just, I mean, just dipped in red dye. Why are you just covered in red like that? I don't know why he covered in red. Let's hear about it. I have tried in the wine press alone and of the people. There was none with me. He said, it was nobody with me. What else? For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. That's blood all over his garments. And I will stain all my raiment. He said, all his clothes going to be stained with blood. This is what he's coming back. And it's saying that he's going to be coming from Edom. Right? Basra is Edom. Right? So he, this man going to be coming from Edom. And he's going to be traveling to save us. And just lighting people up on this darn way. Making the darn mess. Just bloody all over. In Matthew chapter 22 verse 1. All right? Notice that he said nobody was with him. All right? He got all that stuff. He is doing it by himself. You keep on reading right there. He is like, man, I looked around. Wasn't nobody there. Matter of fact, keep getting it. Hold on before we go. Keep getting it. What else he say? For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. Uh-huh. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered <laughs> that there was none to uphold. He said, he said, I looked around. It wasn't nobody to help. I mean, I'm just lighting people up. I'm covered in blood. Everybody's blood is stained in my stuff. I look around. It wasn't nobody to help me. Matter of fact, nobody could uphold. So watch what he had to do. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. I'm going to have to do it myself. I'm so mad. I'm just going to have to do this whole thing myself. Nobody helped him. And I will Don't tread. make a mistake. Oh, go ahead. And I will tread down the people in my anger and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. Right? Nobody helped the man. He did it all by himself. So, I mean, let's just say we all got on the same garments. But you do all the work. What my garment going to look like? All right. Let's grab it. This is uh, this, uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 1. It's Matthew chapter 22, verse 1. When you understand what the book is talking about, then you'll understand what the parables is talking about. Then you'll understand what Revelation is talking about. And Yahshua answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. Mm -hmm. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the uh, wedding, and they would not come. Uh -huh. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the, rain, and the, rain, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Mm -hmm. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt, burnt up their city. Mm -hmm. Then said he to his servants, the wedding Watch is ready. Watch what he said to his servants. The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Mm -hmm. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find bid to the marriage. Mm -hmm. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good. Mm -hmm. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there was a man which had not on a wedding garment. He said it was a man who didn't have on a wedding garment. What happened? And he said unto him, friend, how camest thou in here not having a wedding garment? Uh-huh. And he was speechless. He didn't have nothing to say. He was like, I don't know. Let's see. Then said the king to, his, to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. Get your butt out. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Get your butt out. You don't have a garment? Get your butt out. So now you know what he is talking about in Revelation. Right? He talking about everybody got to have a garment. You don't mess around. You get caught without your garment, people will see your shame. Y'all, she was like, man, it's just like a king who, in, who invited these people to his wedding, to his son's wedding. And you know what? Everybody had something to do at that time. They were looking like, man, I got to tend to my field. Ain't nobody, a lot of stuff that was more important than his son wedding. So after that, King was offended, went out, slaughtered him, got right on with him. What are you talking about? He talking about us. Yeah. Talking about our people. We rejected the son. We rejected the son. We pierced the son. 
So he got rid of us, sent us out into captivity, right? Then he said, you know what? Go find whoever you can find out there. Anybody who takes it, anybody who put it on, invite them to it. But they got to become dressed. They got to come dressed right. These people will tell you, come as you are. Do it sound like, where they get that from the book if this is what we read? He said, why, bro, why are you here and you don't have on the wedding garment? He was speechless. That man just look at him. I just, they just came for the food. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Get out. He threw him outside where he's weeping and gnashing the teeth. Talking about hell. Right? We look at it. It's important that we understand this. The garment is important. That's what it looked like when you ain't got no garment. Right? This is a, this is a, give me Revelation 19. Revelation 19, verse 8. That's what it looks like when you don't have any garment whatsoever. Revelation 19 going to tell us what our garment should look like. Remember, we just read, we just read uh, uh, Matthew, and he told us that, you know what I'm saying, we should have on the garment. Then before that, we read uh, uh, Isaiah. 63, who told us that it's only one person doing the work. Only one person doing the work, right? And he the one that's drifting blood. So now let's hear what Revelation 19 got to say. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, the great city wherein were made rich, all that had ships in the sea by reason of her coast. coast it's talking about Babylon. For in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Mm -hmm. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great what millstone. What verse is that? 21. Give me 8. I'm on 18, sorry. You said 19. 19 verse 20. Yeah. And the beast was taken, and with him... No, nah, 19 verse 8. Oh, 19 verse 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. It's talking about Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven. All right, keep going. And he said unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he now, said didn't me, we hear about a parable of a son's wedding? The Lamb is the son. He said, Blessed are the ones who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Y'all thought it was just a parable. Keep going. And he said unto me, these are the true sayings of God. Mm -hmm. And I fell on his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren that have the testimony of Yahushua. Worship God, for the testimony of Yahushua is the spirit of prophecy. Uh -huh. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness does he judge and make war. Watch this. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Uh huh. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Uh huh. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped he, in blood. He was clothed with what? In a vesture dipped in blood. So this man that came from Edom, who tread the wine press by himself, he looked around with nobody to help. Matter of fact, nobody was there to uphold him. So you know what he did? He looked to his arm. And in his fury, he got the job done. Right? And then he shows up, and he dip, he's in a vesture that he's in clothing that's dipped in blood, right? I wonder what everybody else's clothing looked like, though. Let's see. And his name is called the Word of God. Uh huh. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen. They're clothed in what? Fine linen. What else? White and clean. White and clean. Because nobody helped them. They followed them, but. Nobody helped them. Our garments got to be white and clean. If we try to help them, then it all goes back to what, what uh, Deuteronomy taught us. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. If we get to trying to get in, get in the way of his vengeance, it's a problem. Now we're going to get dirty. And if we dirty, guess what? We ain't getting in. We ain't getting in if we dirty. What does that remind us of? That's why he said turn the other cheek. 
What does that remind us of in our history? What's or it, who? Uh, uh, what's, what's my man name? G. Hugh, when he got it all. What's my name? G. Hugh? G. Hugh. G. Hugh was all bad, though. Well, not all bad, but G. Hugh was. Nah. <laughs> when they came in. What about David? Yeah. Didn't David want to build, you know what I'm saying? He uh, wanted to build the temple, didn't he? That's right. He was a Why couldn't he build the temple? He was a man of war. He was bloody. <laughs> he said, he, you, you a man of war. You bloody. Solomon had to do that thing. The son had to do it. David couldn't do it. He was a man of war. David's a good man now. Right? Books say he only sinned in one matter. That's the matter of Uriah. Right? But the most high God still looked at him like, I mean, it's judgment. Righteous judgment, even. You, you know what I'm saying? You did what I told you to do when you killed them people. Nevertheless, you got a little blood on your garment there. Right? You got a little blood on your garment. I can't have you build my temple. Why don't you just relax? We wait until your son come around. A man of peace. What did he name his son? Solomon. Solomon. Peaceful. He's a man of peace. Right? That's important for us to understand. We can't help at all. All this stuff going to be happening. And when y'all shoe will come up, we can't get dirty. We got to stay clean in our garments. Guess what happens if we get a little stain on our garments or something? Give me Zephaniah. We get out there. I mean, let's just say we get excited. Y'all sure show up. He just came from Edom, lighting people butt up. You know what I'm saying? Come in dripping with blood. He just show up. He like, all right, y'all, that's it. It's a whole other bunch of nations that surround us. He like, all right, y'all, this is it. You get so happy. You look like, yeah, we can win this thing. We scared before. All these nations coming around. We scared. You know we scared. We sitting there trembling in our darn boots. This is Zephaniah 1. You know what I'm saying? 1 verse 7. We trembling in our darn boots. All these nations around us about to get at us. But we see this man show up. He just lit up all the Edomites. He dripping in blood. We going to get real confident after that. Pulling out swords and weapons and all types of, who knows, we might have pistols. You know what I'm saying? Pulling out all types of stuff. He's like, okay, let's get them now, y'all. We ready to get it. As soon as you bust a darn move, you got a stain now. What's going to happen when you get a stain? Zephaniah tell us. It's Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 7. It's Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 7. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God. He said, day. do what? Hold thy peace. When he show up, shut up. He said, hold your peace at the presence of the Lord God. What else? For the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord has... What is that? I mean, I don't want nobody to feel like I'm just taking stuff out of the book and then I'm just making it fit. Did it not just say, hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, because what is at hand? For the day of the Lord is at hand. I ain't got to trick nobody. When I'm showing you something in the book, it's because it's there. Keep going. For the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has bid his guests. He said he prepared a sacrifice, and he's bid his guests to the wedding, the marriage supper. Just like we've been reading about this whole time, he's bidding his guests. We just read about a parable where he has guests that's bidding. We just read in uh, Revelation 19 where he bid a guest. Right? Let's go. Keep going. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children all and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. <laughs> Your clothes ain't right. Your butt getting pimped, punished. You get out there and get to moving too quick and you get some stain on your, on your apparel, it becomes strange at that point. He said he's going to punish all the princes, all these rulers. Remember, it's going to be a whole bunch of kings that's surrounding us. They become coming out. He says he's getting all of them and everybody who has strange apparel. That's it. Right? We have to take this a lot more seriously. A lot of people are going to get real confident. They're going to think they with us and everything. They're going to make it through the wilderness period. They're going to get separated in their tribe. Some of the strangers are going to be in the tribe too. We going to be terrified because we thought we was good in peace. People didn't know the book, didn't know what to expect. They got comfortable. Then all of a sudden, all these people start coming after us. We like, we ain't got no army. We can't fight. It's not enough of us. It's way more. And then we going to be nervous. Then all of a sudden, he going to show up dripping in blood. We, we know he just killed a whole bunch of people. He's going to show up dripping in blood. We going to be like, we can win this thing now, y'all. You gonna have some people that just run out there, try to do stuff on their own. They gonna get punished right along with them. 
it's very important that we can look at these things and we can understand what we after and what we're trying to do and understand our order, right? Because we know how the man works. We know how he's doing it. Grab me Acts chapter 1. He already gave us the blueprint. He gave us the game plan. He dropped enough little, little nuggets in there so we can follow our way all the way back. Little bread, bread, uh, breadcrumbs. It's Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Watch this. Remember this, what we're reading about right now, this is what this is what everybody was waiting for. This is why we didn't understand. This is why we didn't see the man when he came the first time. He disguised himself as this, this peaceable person. You know, hey, I'm not here to hurt anybody. I'm not here for war. We wasn't expecting that. We was expecting the one that we're reading about right now. This man that's dripped in blood. That's what we thought was coming all along. You tell us about a Messiah, the anointed one, then we thinking, who's the one that's about to turn all these nations on top of their head? All these nations that's against us, who's the one that's going to turn all this stuff on top of their head? Right? That's the Yahushua we was looking for. He show up, and he's like, man, I ain't trying to fight nothing. He disguised himself, so we killed the man. We pierced him. Right? Now we look at it. Now we trying to, we trying to get back. We like, okay. Now I know who I'm dealing with because he's revealed these things to us. But if we look, right, this is, let's finish reading Acts. Watch how they react to him. This is Acts chapter 1, verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Right? So this, this, is, when, this is after his resurrection. He came back. So it's like the whole time they're waiting for one thing. When you going to get it cracking? Is this the time that you're going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Remember, we've been out of business for a minute now. Right? We had the Assyrians, and while the Assyrians were going, I mean, technically we still had kings, not in uh, Israel, but we still had kings in Judah, right? Then Babylonians came, that put an end to all our kings. From the Babylonians, you had the, uh, the, who came that? Medes and Persians? Yeah. You had the Babylonians, then you had the Medes and the Persians, then after that, the Greeks, and after that, the Romans, right? So then the Romans came in. And in that, we really didn't have no king. So they got rid of us all together. Right? So if you look at this time, it's the time of the Romans. We've, we've been ruled for hundreds of years at this point. So we're looking like, when are you going to put us back on top? Right? So they asked me, it's like, is this, I mean, he resurrected. We've seen the miracles. We know for sure you the Messiah now. Before, we was like, eh, we didn't really know. Maybe we believe. But now we see it. You the Messiah. We just saw you resurrect. So... Is it time to restore the kingdom of Israel yet? Watch what he say. It is not for you to know the times or the of, or the seasons which Boy, it ain't the none of your has put in his own power. Uh huh. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judah and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Uh huh. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received them out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Right? So then two men came, and they stood in white apparel. What, what apparel? White? White. Because they didn't help. Keep going. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahshua, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. The same way he left is the same way he coming back. That's what they tried to tell him. They're like, man, why y'all looking like that? Don't worry about it. The same way y'all saw him leave, same way he coming back. Watch what this next verse say. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet. Which the is what? From the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. He said they left called the, the mount that was called Olivet. So that means they was at the mount that was called Olivet when Yahushua went up. The two men told him, and the men dressed in white, they're like, man, the same way y'all saw him leave, that's the same way he's going to come back. Watch this. This is Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1. It's Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1. 
Behold, the day of the Lord comes, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Uh huh. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken. Uh huh. And the houses rifled, and the women ravaged, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Mm hmm. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. He gonna fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Watch this. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before the, the Mount of what? Olives. The same place he went up. His feet gonna end up standing in the same place where he went up. And what's gonna happen after he land there? Which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. He said, the Mount of Olives gonna sit there and fall down and pull itself apart from the east and west. So then it's going to create a path for us to do what? Let's see. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. Mm -hmm. And he shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yeah, ye shall flee like ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. He said, we going <laughs> to jet out of that thing. Remember. These people going to be surrounding us. They going to be trying to break in and get us. Y'all, she was going to show up bloody, dripped in blood. His feet going to touch down on the Mount of Olives, the same place where he left up at. After that, that thing going to split open. It's going to push aside, and it's going to create a valley. And then he already told us that it's going to be a big battle at the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And then we heard about the Valley of Megiddo. Which, if you translate it into Greek, Armageddon. Armageddon. Right? We're going to be running through it trying to escape because all these people are trying to get us. Let's keep going. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. It's not going to be clear nor dark. But what? But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord. Not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it's going to be the day of the Lord. He going to bring the light. This is Revelation chapter 14. Revelation 14, 14. Once the most high God make this thing make sense to you, ain't nothing to be scared of, be scared of, be afraid of. Nothing to be scared of. And I look. And behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having his head a golden crown. Uh huh. Having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. He had a sharp sickle in his hand. Watch this. This is a vision that he had. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for, uh -huh. for, the, for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Uh huh. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. Mm -hmm. And another angel came out from the altar, which had the power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy st sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for, the, uh -huh. for her grapes are fully ripe. Right, so they're using the symbolism, it's a vision. They're using the symbolism of grapes, right? All right, and the grapes, we kind of think of the green ones, or we might have like the little purple grapes, and it's just another... If you look at like legit grapes, the type that they talking about, the type you make wine out of, you bust them things open. It's thick, red, or purple, dark purple, you know what I'm saying, blood-looking juice that come out of it. And that thing will stain everything you got, right? So they're comparing the slaughter of people to grapes. Because when you crack these grapes open, the grapes that they talking about, you're going to have a big seed in the middle. You crack that thing open, that thing going to be bleeding. It's going to look like blood, right? It's like pouring out thick wine, you know what I'm saying, all over everything. So he said they comparing that to grapes. So in the vision, he's showing grapes, but in reality, it's going to be people, right? Keep going. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. Right? The wine press represents, in a wine press, what you would do is a person would take his shoes off or something, he would jump up inside of this little, this little bucket, and he would just stomp down on top of a whole bunch of grapes. And once he stopped down on the grapes, it, it starts to make the juices come out. And out of those juices, he can make wine, right? So the wine press is, is talking about a slaughter. You're just talking about a whole bunch of people that you're just stomping all over, right? 
And it's just giving a picture of the slaughter that's going to happen. Right? Keep going. And the wine press was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the wine press, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. They said, it, in his vision, he said he saw so much blood, it came up. Remember, we in the valley, right? When it rained, it rained today. When it rained out here, what happens? Blood. It floods. We in the valley, that's what happens. Because the valley is just, it's like, it's like a bowl. It's going to be in between mountains. You know what I'm saying? So you pour something in there, it ain't got nowhere to go. It's just going to fill up, right? So that's what happens. He said it was enough blood to come to the horse's bridle. So the horse and the strap, you know, the strap you put on the horse right there, it came all the way up on top of the horse. Right? And for how long? By the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. A furlong is, uh, that was like, so back then you would have like a, a stadium or a race. Not a stadium like we have today. A stadium that we have is probably bigger than what they would be referring to. But like it was usually used for races. You know what I'm saying? You had somebody race. You know what I'm saying? So you would think about like 200 yards. You know what I'm saying? 200 yards. It's 1,200 yards is basically what they're saying, right? they saying just, I mean, that thing is just far, just all the way around, right? All the way around. they trying to, not 1,000, I'm sorry, he said 600,000? 1,600 furlongs. 1,600, right? So we look at these things. It's going to be a bloody mess when the Most High God get done with it. And we not going to be able to help a bit. We getting under that valley, and he tell us, get out of Dodge. He said, I'll take care of it from here. All right? He said, I'll take care of it here. You know what I'm saying? He's a light, get the light need people up, and they don't know what to darn do. All right? This is Isaiah chapter 34. It's Isaiah chapter 34. We're going to do Isaiah chapter 34, verse 1. Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people. Let uh -huh. the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. Uh -huh. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. Uh -huh. He has utterly destroyed them. He has delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. Their stink and the mountain will come shall out be of melted their with their blood. The mountain will be melted with their blood. And right. all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Mm -hmm. And all their hosts shall fall down, and the leaf falls off from as the leaf falls off from the vine, and as the falling fig from the fig tree. Mm -hmm. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Edumia. It's gonna come down upon who? Edumia. What's Edumia? Edom. That's another way of saying Edom. Remember, we said that he's gonna come from Edom. You see, his sword gonna be bathed in blood. It's going to be coming from Edom. Keep going. It shall come down upon Edomia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Right? So we look, he's going to be coming from Edom, just like he said before. Who is this that's coming from Basra? That's Edom. Right? If you look at Edom, Edom would be right here. Edom would be south of where our, our, our people were. Right? So he's going to be coming, going north. Right? Edom would be right below us. he would be coming north. Trying to get to us, right? Coming to save us. Because all these people are going to be circling around us. He's going to choose that path. He's going to start lighting their butts darned up, right? Right, even, uh, let's go to Joshua. Joshua will help us get a picture of where everything is. It's Joshua chapter uh, 15. Just so we can get an idea of some of the places that we mentioned. Like, where is all this stuff? Joshua? Yeah, Joshua chapter 15, verse 1. I'm over there. I'm coming to me. This then was the lot of the tribe of the children of Judah by their families. Even to the border of Edom, 
the wilderness of Zin, south. The border of what? Edom. The so this is the lot of the children of who? Judah. So Judah was a border of what? Uh, Edom. So Edom was right below us. Right? Southward. Huh? Southward was the uttermost part of the south coast. Right? So Edom was south of us. Just south of us. So now if Yahushua is going to be coming from Basra, which is Edom, then guess where he's coming? He's headed north. Right? Keep going. And their south border was from the shore of the salt sea, from the bay that looks southward. Uh-huh. And it went out to the south side of Mele Akrabim and passed along to Zin. Uh-huh. And ascended up on the south side of Kadesh Barnea mm -hmm. and passed along to Hezron and went up to Adar and fetched a compass to Karka. Mm-hmm. From there, it passed toward Asmon and went into unto the river of Egypt. And the goings out of the coast were at the sea. This shall be your south coast. Uh huh. The east border was the salt sea, even unto the end of Jordan. And their border in the north quarter was from the bay of the sea at the uttermost part of Jordan. Mm -hmm. And the border went up to Beth Hogla and passed along by the north of Beth Arabah. And the border went up into the stone of Bohan, the son of Reuben. Mm -hmm. And the border went up toward Deber from the valley of Achor, and so northward looking toward Gilgal, that is, before going up to Adumim, mm -hmm. which is on the south side of the river, and the border passed towards the waters of En Shemesh, and to the goings out thereof were at En Rogel. And the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom unto the south the side. The valley of the son of who? Hinnom. Unto the south side of the Jebusite, the same as Jerusalem. And the border went up to the top of the mountain that lies before the valley of Hinnom westward, which is at the end of the valley of the giants northward. Right? So there's a valley of the son of Hinnom. That may not sound familiar to us, but if you look when Yahushua, whenever Yahushua says hell, or not whenever, but uh, many of the time when Yahushua was saying hell, a lot of people just read hell. But in actuality, what he actually said, he said Gehenna. Right? Which is talking about in Greek, it was Gehenna. But in Hebrew, it's the Valley of Hinnom. The same thing. So when he was talking about hell, or when it translates it as hell, rather, he's really talking about the Valley of Hinnom, which is another place in Jerusalem. Right? So let's try to figure that out. The Valley of Hinnom. Why would he use that as something to describe punishment with fire? Right? Why do people feel comfortable translating that word as hell? In the New Testament, let's grab it. Let's grab. Uh, let's grab Second Chronicles chapter twenty-eight, verse one. This is why Gehenna could be used as hell, the way we see it. When we talk about hell, we talk about fire, all right? Burning in fire. I'm gonna see. You. I'm gonna show you why this all makes sense. Bro, I forgot what happened to the valley of the sun of Hinnom. It's like on the tip of my tongue, though. Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem, but he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord like David his father. Mm -hmm. For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and made also molten images for Balaam. Moreover, he burned incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom. He did what? Burned incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom. So he was in the valley of the son of Hinnom burning incense. All right, not so bad. What else he do? And burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. He burnt his children where? In the valley of the son of Hinnom. This is where these people, we hear about these people, most high God said, don't sacrifice your children. This is where they used to do it at, the valley of the son of Hinnom. They used to take their kids down there and just light them up on fire and burn them. Right? Now we can see why that gives a picture of hell. Right, most like God said, don't do it. Watch what Jeremiah says. Jeremiah chapter 7. Watch what Jeremiah said. Verse 7. I mean, chapter 7. Yeah, chapter 7, verse uh, 29, I think. Let me see. Yeah, verse 29. It's Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 29. Cut off the here, O Jerusalem, and cast it away, and take up a lamentation on high places, for the Lord has rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. Why? 
For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, says the Lord. Uh oh. What they do? They have set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to pollute it. Uh oh. They have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom. To burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not. Neither came in it into my heart. He said, I didn't command y'all to do that. Y'all burned y'all kids down there. Neither gave it came in my heart. What you going to do with this place, Lord? Therefore, behold, the days come, says the Lord, that it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter, for they shall bury for they shall bury in Tophet till there be no place. He said, they're going to bury until it be no place in the valley of Tophet, right? In the valley of the son of Hinnom. It's Ezekiel chapter 39. Watch this. He said, they're going to bury until it be no place. You ain't going to have nowhere else to put these people. Ezekiel what? It's Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 8. You don't have no place to put these people. Behold, it is come and it is done, says the Lord God. This uh -huh. is the day whereof I have spoken. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and bucklers, bows and arrows. And this is after he's laid all these people out. Hand stage. We're going to come out and he's going to tell us we're going we gonna to take all their weapons and we're going to light them on fire. What else? And the spears and they shall burn them with fire seven years. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is us lighting stuff on fire. It's going to burn for seven years. Watch this. So that they shall take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any out of the forest, for they shall burn the weapons with fire. Mm -hmm. And they shall spoil those that spoil them and rob those that rob them, says the Lord God. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will give unto Gog a place there of graves in Israel, mm -hmm. the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea, and it shall stop the noses of the passengers, and there shall they burn, shall, there thou shall, shall they bury Gog in all his multitude. Mm -hmm. They shall call it the Valley of Haman Gog. Mm -hmm. In seven months shall the house of Israel be burying of them that they may cleanse the land. They're going to be burying these people. All right, keep going. Yea, all the people of the land shall bury them. It shall be to them a renown the day that I shall be glorified, says the Lord God. And they shall sever out men of continual employment passing through the land to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth to cleanse it after the end of seven months shall they search. Mm -hmm. And the passengers that pass through the land with, when any sees a man's bone, then shall he set up a sign by it till the borders have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog. There's going to be so many people, <laughs> they're going to have to set up a sign to find their bodies. All right, keep going. And also the name of the city shall be Hamona. Thus shall they cleanse the land. And thou, son of man, thus says the Lord God, speak unto every feathered fowl and to every beast of the field. Assemble yourselves and come together. He said every feathered fowl and every beast of the field is going to have to assemble themselves and come together. Keep going. Gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you, even at a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. So remember when we were reading in uh, Zephaniah, he is telling us about the strong, the strange clothing. All right, he said the people, he said, I'm going to punish the princes and anybody who wears strange apparel. All right? Remember, right before that, he said he invited them to his sacrifice and to his bidding. All right? He invited them to a sacrifice. Here it goes. The sacrifice, keep going. This is my sacrifice, keep going. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bullocks, and of all them fatlings of Bashan. Uh-huh. And you shall eat fat till you be full, and drink blood till you be drunken of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. He invited all the, the fowls and the strong beasts and the beasts to come out, and they ate the people, right? Keep going. Thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men, and with all men of war, says the Lord God. Mm -hmm. And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed in my hand that I have laid upon them. Mm -hmm. So the house of Israel that shall know, I am the Lord their God from that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. He captivity. said they went into captivity for their iniquity. iniquity. And what else? Because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them. Uh huh. And gave them into the hand of their enemy, so that so fell they all by the sword. He said the reason why I did this is because they 
were in, they they got caught up in their iniquity. He said, and that's the only reason I sent them up and gave them to their enemy. He said, and the Gentiles going to finally know that, and the people of Israel going to finally know that. That's the reason why he's doing all this. Just to prove a darn point. Right? Just because he made a promise long ago, and he's going to show you, yeah, I was for real. Right? Keep going. Actually, no, we ain't got to keep going. Grab uh, Revelation chapter 20. He's going to be burying these people, lighting these people on fire. Birds is going to be eating. It's Revelation chapter 20, give me verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Uh huh. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Guess what it didn't call him? Joe didn't call him Lucifer. All he missed these people to you. His name ain't no darn Lucifer. His name is the devil, the old serpent, Satan, and what else? The dragon. And the dragon. That's it. Keep going. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should dece that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. Mm -hmm. And I saw thrones, and they that and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Right? So after that, Satan going to be locked up. Right? For a while, he's going to be locked up. And then thrones are set up, and judgment was given to people. Right? So now our kingdom is being established. Let's see. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahushua and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. All right? So then everybody is resurrected. Watch, he'll tell us what it is. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Uh-huh. This is the first resurrection. All right? So it's going to be a, a, the first resurrection. All right? Everybody who come after that, we can read about their resurrection, which is not really a resurrection, but we can read about them at the end of chapter 20 when it says, all the dead were called up and had to stand before the judgment. And they was all thrown into Matter of fact, let's grab it real quick. Jump on down. What is that? Verse maybe 14. Yeah. Verse 11. Verse 11. Give me verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him, him that sat on it from whose face the earth, earth and heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And so these are dead people. Some people burnt up. Some people all messed up. Somehow, small and great, all of them stood before the Most High God. Because the Most High God brought all their body parts back together just so they could stand for their judgment. Right? Keep going. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. Uh-huh. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Mm -hmm. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Mm -hmm. And they were judged, every man according to their works. Mm -hmm. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. If you wasn't found in the book of life, you were cast in the lake of fire. If you wasn't part of that first resurrection, you stand in judgment to be cast into the lake of fire. Right? So everything was set up for us. Right? And we reign. Let's jump back up there. Where we leave off? Verse what? Six? Verse six? Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Mm -hmm. And such... The second death has no power. You can't, you can't. What we just read about, he said, that thing can't touch you as long as you're part of the first resurrection. Ain't no other chance. You either part of the first resurrection or you're part of the second death. It ain't no second resurrection. A lot of people be like, see, that's the first resurrection. It's the second resurrection. Ain't no second resurrection. You never heard the Bible talk about a second resurrection. It's either first resurrection or second death. That's it. If you part of the first resurrection, you ain't got nothing to do with the second death. You part of the second death, you ain't got nothing to do with the first resurrection. And it ain't nothing in between. Right? Keep going. Blessed and holy is he that has the has the uh he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. 
But they shall be priests of God and of the Messiah and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand So he said we're going to reign with him a thousand years. So notice that the second death doesn't happen before that thousand years is up. It's a very good reason for that. And I'll show y'all why in a second. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Uh huh. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog mm -hmm. and Magog, to gather them together to battle. Again, all these people are going to come against us to battle. All right, keep going. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Uh huh. And they went up to the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the, of the saints about in the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Mm -hmm. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Uh huh. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it. So mm -hmm. now we're getting into what we just read again, right? So now you get into the great, the great white throne and that's how, that's how you start to get into all this stuff. Let me fix the camera. All right, so now you start to get into all this stuff, all right? So that's when you get into the great right throne, but we have to reign for a 1,000 years. So notice, it's a lot of people don't put this part together. We reigning for a 1,000 years. Everything good. We running the show. Devil locked away. But all of a sudden, devil comes back. Remember, we resurrected, right? This is Yahushua was in the house. With the resurrection already happened. Everything seems full. But the devil's ever to, able to come back and convince people to go against God. Who is he convincing? Is he convincing people that's resurrected? No. Nah. So that means it was still people. Right? Y'all remember I mentioned before that it's still going to be people. We're going to be running around, resurrected bodies, looking all beautiful, however y'all wish you would look. However, the books say however he is, we are. Right? So however he end up looking, we're going to be looking beautiful just like him. You know what I'm saying? And then there's still going to be regular people just like you and, our, you and I are today. They're going to be walking around, running around, coming to us, trying to get sacrifices and, and, and worshiping God and all that stuff from around the world. All this stuff is still going to be happening in a regular way. But we won't be regular. We'll be resurrected with the Most High God. There will still be a remainder of people. Isaiah tells us a little bit about it. Go to Isaiah chapter uh, 24. This is Isaiah chapter 24. Verse 1. So Isaiah chapter 24, verse 1. Behold, the Lord makes the earth empty and makes it waste and turns it upside down and scatters abroad the inhabitants thereof. Right? This is talking about when he's getting rid of everybody in the world, right? He turned it upside down. He scattered abroad everybody, right? What else? And it, shall come, and it shall be as with the people, so with the priest. Mm -hmm. As with the servant, so with his master. He said, in other words, what he's trying to say is, everybody going to get it. You a priest, you going to get it just like the people. Who else? As with the servant, so with his master. Mm -hmm. You a servant, you going to get it just like the master. You a master, you going to get it just like the servant. As with the maid, so with her mistress. Mm -hmm. As with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. Uh huh. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. He said it's going to be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. So it feel like ain't nobody going to be left, right? Keep going. The earth mourns and fades away, and the world languishes and fades away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. Uh huh. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Uh huh. Because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Uh huh. Therefore has the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, uh huh. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. There are what? Few men left. There are few men left. He never told you he's going to get rid of everybody. He said there were few. We read through all the revelations. All we see is one third of the sea, one third of the ships, right? This amount of the people are going to die. This amount of the people are going to die. You never see where every single person dies, right? Grab a couple chapters over, excuse me, um, Isaiah 26. It's Isaiah chapter 26. Give me verse 19. 
we try to wrap it up. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body, shall they arise. Uh huh. Awaken, seeing ye that dwell in dust. For the dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Right? So the earth, just like what we read in Revelations, he said the sea and the earth is going to give up its dead. And then he telling us, your dead body is going to rise with my dead body. We're going to be living. That's resurrection. So you're going to see people rise, some onto death and judgment, some onto the resurrection of life. Right? Yahushua is not the first person that mentioned this. This is Isaiah telling us about it. Right? A lot of the stuff we read come from the book. It comes from the prophets. Right? Give me Zechariah chapter 14. We can pick up where we left off. Zechariah chapter 14. Give me verse 8. Remember, Zechariah was telling us about Yahushua showing up, his feet touching uh, the Mount of Olives. Remember, Acts told us that he left from the Mount of Olives. So we come back the same way he left. His feet touch, it split apart. You know what I'm saying? The mountain split apart, creates a valley. He said, we're going to flee through the valley. And after that, he's going right to darn work. All right? He's going to light these people up. Watch this. This is Zechariah 14, 8. And it shall come, and it shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem. Half of so you remember that. You remember we read about this last week. We read about the water that come from the temple, and that's going to spread out. And the further it get, it's going to come out. Those are living water. So it's saying, you see, the whole book is consistent. Zechariah telling us the same thing. Living water is going to come from Jerusalem. Keep going. Half of them toward the former sea, and half of them toward the hinder sea. Mm -hmm. Remember, and in winter shall it be. Uh-huh. And the Lord shall be king over the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. Uh-huh. And all the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Rumon, south of Jerusalem. And it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate into the place of the first the fish, the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananiel unto the king's wine press. Right? So everything going to be inhabited. We're going to have this river of light that's coming out. Right? Grab Revelation chapter 22. Let's go ahead and get up out of here. Watch this. This is Revelation chapter 22. Everything going to be beautiful. Most High God going to start putting this stuff back together, lighting everything back up. It's so much more. It's, it's just, I mean, it's just what we uh, had time to grab. Verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Right? So this is the same one. Same one. But notice the differences here. It's the same river of life, but notice the differences from what we read in Ezekiel. Right? Keep going. In the midst of the street of it, and either side of the river was there a tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Remember, Ezekiel told us about a tree that had the healing of the nations. Right? Keep going. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their forehead. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Right? So here goes the difference. Right? We don't need no sun. Right? The Most High God going to give us light, and we going to reign forever and ever. Keep going. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Uh-huh. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keeps the saying of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard, heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Uh huh. Then said he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brother and the prophets, mm -hmm. and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Give every man according to his what? His work. Shall according be. to his belief? His work. According to how he feel? His work. According to the fact that God love him? His work. He's going to give you according to what you do. All through the book, it's never changed. I don't know how these people get, got over on us for these years. The book ain't never told us none of this stuff that they teach us in these churches. 
it always come back to what are you doing, right? It's the whole book we read through. We just finished up going through the whole book, and we ain't never seen what these Christians tell us yet. We still sit in their churches. Keep going. I am Alpha and Omega. He said, I'm the beginning and I'm the end. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. Uh-huh. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates. They may have right to the what? Tree of life. It took the whole book just to get back where we started. It's the last last page of the book. Real quick. Genesis chapter 3. Give me Genesis chapter 3 verse 22. He said, all this was just to give you rights to the tree of life. Let me show you all where the tree of life came on the scene. Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent, forth, sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from where he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. He said, To keep the way of the tree of life. We got cut off from the tree of life. We got put in a position where the tree of life wasn't available to us. It takes the whole book that we just read through. Remember, we've been on this for two years. We started off in Genesis about two years ago, right? And we made it all the way to the end of the book. And now we find the conclusion of the whole matter is just to get us back to we, where we have access to the tree of life. All this damage from just not doing what God said in the first place. The book right here in front of us. Now we're going back to the darn beginning. Genesis, that's just, a, that's just a start off. Now we got to read it all over again. Make sure we understand it and keep doing it until it's time comes, for, for it's time for him to come back. We got to be prepared when the man come back. Y'all see, he's not playing. You got on the wrong clothes, your butt getting it. You let these people tell you what they want to tell you. Come as you are. Don't let no, no Hebrew Israelite, a Hebrew Israelite to take that teaching. No, so yeah, that means you got to have the tassels at the bottom. You don't shut up. You don't know what they darn talking about. You don't wear them tassels. Your butt going to get lit up too if you ain't obeying God. Going to have tassels. Your tassel going to be lit on fire. Sitting there, you ain't, you ain't obeying God. I appreciate the tassels, though. Go ahead and put them on. Right? It's important that we understand what the Most High God requires, what he's looking for, and understand the teaching. If we don't, it's because we are not doing his will. And if we're not doing his will, it's because we don't have a heart for the man. All right, we have to pray that the man give us a heart that we obey and that we love him and then we continue. Otherwise, we'd just be doing this for a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden it's back to what we were doing before. All right, maybe we come back for a couple more weeks, just like Pharaoh. Remember, Pharaoh kept on repenting. If y'all don't remember, don't worry, we'll get there soon. Next week, we starting off in Genesis. All right, and we're going to look at it and we got to be able to see the book. We have to be able to see the man all through the book. Because it all has to testify him. Right? All this stuff in Revelation that we read, yeah, big mystery, big mystery. When you know the book, it opens it all up. You look at it. How you going to know what Revelation talking about? You don't know what Genesis and Exodus talking about. If you can't understand Job, if you can't understand Leviticus, and you can't understand, you can't understand Deuteronomy and Numbers, you don't get Joshua. Right? You don't know what Samuel is talking about, what they talking about, who is Ruth. Right? I don't understand Kings or Chronicles, right? I can't understand none of the prophets. I don't get none of that stuff. is Spanish to me, right? I don't get Nehemiah. I don't get Ezra. Who is Esther, right? I don't get Psalms. I don't get, I don't get Songs of Solomon. I don't get Proverbs, right? I don't get none of the prophets. I don't get none of this stuff. It gets to the New Testament. I get that, though. You done made a fool out of yourself. If you can get past all that and you say you don't get it, and you think you understand the New Testament, you've made a fool out of yourself. You think you nodding your head. It's the first time you're hearing Revelation opened up like this, and you just nod your head. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And you don't know all this other stuff? You about to make a fool out of yourself. You ain't made a fool out of yourself yet, maybe. 
right? But you you keep moving, you're going to end up making a fool out of yourself too. You got to take your time to learn the rest of the book. It's fun learning about Revelation. You get think about, oh, this is what it could be and all that. That's real fun. Only reason it's fun is because we know the book. Otherwise, it shouldn't be fun for you. You should be able to want God to reveal these things to you. And he will. All we got to do is obey the man. Revelation next week? I mean, uh, Genesis next week? I appreciate you, bro. We got through it. <laughs> One more time? Two more time? Three more time? Depends on how long he come back. Any questions? All right, let's go.